Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, Ethan on Chart Fitness. Today we're talking about the five killers of testosterone to avoid today. So what is testosterone? What actually is it? Why does it matter? Is it just something that only people that want to be super muscular, macho man, bodybuilders, I don't, <clears throat> is it only something they should be worrying about? Or is it something much more than that, okay? So we're gonna look at that. Also, we're gonna look at mood as well too, because a lot of times, we think that testosterone is something that <clears throat> when we have higher rates of it, we're much more crazier with our impulses and our, and our aggress aggression and things like that, but it's really much more than that. And the reason why this is so important today is because there's a lot of people with low testosterone these days, hypogonadism, those rates are skyrocketing. And with hypogonadism, this low testosterone, Men especially, they're more susceptible to experience super high rates of depression, decreased muscle mass, increased, increased fat, low libido, so low sex drive, and you can also eventually develop things like kidney disease or diabetes. And so this is really important. And so for women, it's important as well too, because women with low testosterone, they are also going to experience depression and changes in mood. They're not gonna feel as confident and they're not gonna have that drive that comes from testosterone, because testosterone is much more than a muscle building hormone. And so testosterone, it really interests me as a personal trainer, especially because I help coach those with addictions, breaking addictions, especially to alcohol. And I'm gonna talk about alcohol later, but alcohol really messes with testosterone. And so this testosterone phenomenon is really fascinating to me as a trainer, as an athlete too, because I'm always working out all the time. I've been doing competitions, so I need to make sure I'm doing everything I can to boost my testosterone in myself and in my clients. And so, and the big thing about these drugs too, are with substances, if we get, we're abusing things like alcohol, we're gonna have lower baseline dopamine levels. And lower baseline dopamine levels, they're correlated with lower testosterone. So this is something that I'm always trying to be aware of as a trainer and as an athlete, and now as a coach as well, so. And I also just read this super cool book that's called Master Your Tea by Christopher Walker. And Master Your Tea by Christopher Walker, it's all about testosterone. And it has this pyramid that he like describes are the main parts that you need to focus on to improve your testosterone. And so I'm gonna touch on a little bit of that too today, um, outside of what my recommendations are and the main five killers of testosterone that I have seen. So to start, let's talk about what is the functions of testosterone. So bear with me through this part. This is kind of the science. It's going to matter, so just listen. It's not gonna be that detailed, uh, but let's get into it. So testosterone, it's a sex hormone, right? It's primarily produced by the testes in men. Some is also synth synthesized from the adrenal glands on top of the kidneys as well. In women, testosterone is produced a little bit by the ovaries, the adrenal glands, and then about half of it is synthesized from the peripheral tissues in the body. So that would be like muscles, muscle cells, like wherever testosterone might be in the body. And so how does this start and what influences the release of testosterone? So let's focus on the male system today because this is who's mostly going to be intrigued by this video and so we're going to talk about the male uh, system but if you're interested in females if you want to check out the patterns of action within testosterone you can check out a lot of great articles out there from the journal of endocrinology so in regards to testosterone there's two important systems that we need to remember regarding testosterone and the first one is the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis or the hpg axis okay that's number one and then the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis or HPA axis. So just to keep it simple, HPG axis, HPA axis. Those are the two things that matter in this in the story with testosterone. And so the HPG axis, that is the one that synthesizes the testosterone itself. So what happens first is you have the hypothalamus and the brain it's going to release a hormone called gonadotropin releasing hormone. From there, that hormone goes to your pituitary gland, which is going to stimulate um, the release of two other hormones, which are the gonadotropins. They're called the follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, okay? So the gonadotropins, they're activated first by the hypothalamus, then the pituitary gland, boom. From here, this is what goes down all the way down to the, tes the testes. And so in the testicles, the Leydig cells in there are the ones that are um, activated by those hormones and then they start synthesizing testosterone. So it's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's an easy way to just know that it starts up here in the brain, two hormones go down all the way there and then your testicles start making testosterone. That's how it goes. So once it's produced in the testicles, then it starts circulating in the bloodstream until it is utilized 
by androgen receptors, which would be like muscle cells or whatever areas, could be muscle cells, whatever areas in your body that are typically associated with those masculine traits like muscle gain, facial hair, things like that, okay, bone growth. And so what happens in a controlled fashion is that a lot of this testosterone in the blood is also binded to albumin and sex hormone binding globulin. And sex hormone binding globulin, you can, well, we're gonna abbreviate that as SBHG. And so this is important to know about SBHG because this actually kind of acts like a regulator for the circulating testosterone. So it's good to be aware of it because the more you have of it compared to your free testosterone, you're going to have less available. So this is just essentially limiting the amount of testosterone that's being used in the body. That's SBHG. So sometimes people that have super low testosterone, they have a lot of SBHG and not a lot of free circulating testosterone. And that's probably because the SBHG is binding to a lot of it or they're just not pumping out a lot enough testosterone out of their, their testes, which is usually the case. But it's important to be aware of those things because um, there's two factors in that situation. And we also know that we don't want to lower SBHG too much because that also is the hormone binding globulin that binds to estrogen. And so <laughs> if we are limiting the amount of estrogen that can be bound as well, we are going to have more estrogen floating in our body too, which we are not looking for. We're looking to increase testosterone, okay? So overall, that's, that's how the HPG axis is. Um, now let's talk about the HPA axis, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. This is the one that synthesizes cortisol. And so the reason to understand why cortisol matters because it kind of is a balance with testosterone. And for example, let's talk about working out. When we work out, we're getting into a stress response because we're exhausting ourselves. And so cortisol is very important because what it does is it frees up glycogen, all those types of things in your muscle cells and your liver to use for energy. So cortisol is a stress hormone, but it gets your body working, working, moving, moving. So we're exercising, you need it. You need to have good cortisol. But afterwards, you need to shut that response off because testosterone is like, there, it's like the opposite. So testosterone is going to turn on after your workout and you need cortisol to go down. You need to be relaxed. You need to be, have low stress. That's how you're going to build muscle. And so when we have too much cortisol in our body because we're constantly stressed out, it's super hard to get from that catabolic cortisol state to that anabolic testosterone state where we're going to be putting on muscle. We're going to be um, using our testosterone properly. And so if we don't give our body the chance to get into that anabolic stage because we're too stressed out, and have too much cortisol in our system, then we're not gonna be able to have muscle growth, we're not gonna have good recovery through protein synthesis because we're not gonna have proper testosterone response either. And so that's why it's very important to be aware of the HPA axis as well. And so a big test they kinda do and um, endocrinologists do for people that are struggling with their testosterone is you can do a ratio of your free testosterone to your cholesterol. And you need to have it in a proper area. I'm not sure what the numbers are, I couldn't tell you that. I'm sure if you ask your doctor or something, you can do that. But that just that illustrates the battle from within your body that you need to manage properly. You want to have a good understanding between your ratio of testosterone to cortisol. So that way you can get in the catabolic state during the workout, you can challenge yourself, use the energy, and then after you need the testosterone, you need that testosterone so that way you can build muscle and make your body more healthier and more metabolic and have those positive mood associations that come with having more testosterone, more confident, all those type of things. Whereas with the HPA axis, when you have way too much cortisol, you're living in survival and you're, you're devastating your muscles, you're exhausting yourself, you're living with anxiety, depression, all of those things and, and it disrupts much more, many things within our mental and physical health. So check out my v YouTube video also called Never Feel Stressed Again if you're wondering how to manage your stress because it's very important to have a low level of stress. And of course, we're always gonna be going through things that are hard, but you know, guess what? You have to have a proper intervention in place to handle stress. And if you're not sure whether you're living in survival, like just think about your heart rate, feel about your anxiety. Do you feel anxious all the time? Do you feel just agitated and worried about what people are thinking or what's going on throughout the day? You're likely living in survival then and you have too much cortisol and it's very hard. And if you're struggling with putting on muscle and stuff like that, you're, 
Elevated stress response is probably a big reason for that. So now let's talk about the killers of testosterone. This is how you fuck up your testosterone and destroy your mental health, okay? Number one, terrible diet. If we're continually eating processed foods, you're going to destroy your testosterone levels and diets that are low in fat intake are also associated with lower testosterone levels. Your food intake, not always, but typically is the common denominator whether your physical, your mental health is satisfactory or not. In processed seed and vegetable oils, deep fried foods, processed breads, refined sugars, they're all linked to hypogonadism or AKA low testosterone. Number two, alcohol, which is my vote for probably one of the worst drugs out there for your health and the functioning of society. And I have videos on that, we have articles on it, you can check that out too in the description. So chronic alcohol consumption significantly decreases your testosterone levels by affecting the HPG axis and the HPA axis. So you're not only making yourself have more cortisol, but you're also lowering your testosterone. Alcohol also promotes dysregulation of the dopamine functioning in your brain, which is associated with depression and perhaps other mental disorders. So everyone that I've worked with who has quit drinking alcohol excessively, of course you wanna have, if you're down to drink a little bit, have small levels, that's good, but for people that have quit, that were chronic consumption, having way too much, they've all noticed incredible improvements in sex drive, performance in the gym, and mental health. Mental well-being overall has generally increased from everybody I've known that's made drastic improvements with their, with their alcohol consumption. Number three, sedentary lifestyle. Let's start with sunlight. Vitamin D is an incredibly powerful hormone that promotes testosterone synthesis and an array of other important functions. It, it actually regulates or synthesizes or something about like 900 genes and so especially it's very important with the immune system and as we know vitamin d is absorbed through the skin from sunlight and when we abstain ourselves from the sunlight we suffer hormonally so the sun it's the soul power of life and we can't forget how much we suffer when we hide from it also in the context of sedentary lifestyle high amounts of sitting down all the time and not exercising is connected directly to lower testosterone the more you sit down and hide from exercise and sunlight, you're killing your testosterone. Number four, micronutrients. And this is a really big thing that Christopher Walker in the book for How to Master Your Tea talks about. So according to Christopher Walker and the scientific literature um, that he had referenced, I checked out some of those studies as well. There's four big micronutrient deficiencies besides uh, vitamin D that are connected to super low testosterone levels. And so those four micronutrients are boron, choline, magnesium, and zinc. And what he references, simply supplementing with any of these micronutrients, you're going to see huge increases in free testosterone, probably even lower SBHG levels to make sure your body's using the free testosterone as well. And the explanation for why these deficiencies are so prevalent today um, has to do with modern farming techniques. And the reason um, being is because the soil is kind of being abused over and over and over again. So a lot of these micronutrients that we typically had been consuming for centuries with like healthy, healthier soil, they no longer exist because the soil is being used a little bit excessively now. And so in his book, How to Master Your Tea, Christopher Walker actually puts that as the number one thing to focus on in the guard in the battle with improving testosterone is getting your micronutrients straight. And so I would definitely advise checking out his book, learning more about those, but those five main ones, like I said, are very important to check out, okay? And so number five, we're gonna talk about living in survival. I already talked about it, but that is going to kill your testosterone. Having, when you're drowning in cortisol from a persistent stress response, you're going to destroy your testosterone. So that's the fifth one, and that one's very key and very important. So mental health, stress is very important to get a good grip on. So here's three clear action steps right now to step forward and make a huge difference in increasing your testosterone. First one, we gotta lift weights. If you're not lifting weights, if you're not exercising, if you're not, if you're staying on your ass all the time, you gotta start moving. You gotta do some resistance training, lift weights, calisthenics, all of those things because you're giving your body the basically the epigenetic epigenetic response to promote more testosterone and synthesize more of it and increase muscle mass. And so you gotta get exercise going. So hitting the gym just about three times a week even is going to manifest incredible changes and you're going to feel yourself and your mood improve. And that, a lot of that would probably have to do with your testosterone increasing. Okay, number two action step, get your diet straight. So get those micronutrients figured out, 
with that I just mentioned earlier. And then as far as your food goes, you got to eat healthy whole foods. Processed foods aren't cutting it. They're killing you. And we can't eat, be eating that garbage. We got to eat some real food. Eat some protein. You know, eat some meat. Like eat something that's going to give your body the fuel necessary to boost your testosterone and give you fuel during exercise and workouts and make you feel healthy overall. And lastly, number three, we have to lower our stress. This is the action step that we could start with meditation and journaling. It's going to lower cortisol. There's actually studies that show people that get into meditation practices and journaling practices, they will actually increase testosterone. And how are they doing that? Well, a lot of it has to do with what I mentioned about dopamine and getting our mental health figured out and lowering the cortisol response. That is going to promote also healthy dopamine function in the brain, which is, like I mentioned, associated with higher testosterone. And so this is why we have to get our mental health straight. We have to do meditation and we have to journal. We have to know what's going on up here so that way we can feel calm outside of here. And when we go out in the world, we're not stressed and we're not overactively full of cortisol, ruining our anabolic state of testosterone, okay? So get a grip on your stress as well. And so that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Remember, testosterone is important. And uh, Dr. Andrew Huberman, the neuroscientist that's super popular right now, he's got this super good podcast, YouTube channel. What he says about testosterone that's kind of cool is that it's actually the hormone that helps us lean into effort. So it's not necessarily just about masculine traits and just about putting muscle, but it makes doing hard work feel good. It makes you want to lean into effort. So that's really cool. Testosterone is a very important thing. And so sometimes it feels kind of weird to talk about it, but it's very powerful. And so if you like this video, if you want to learn more about testosterone, check out my website. I just wrote an article on it. Also subscribe to my channel here, please. Ethan Etchart Fitness. Follow me on Instagram at Ethan Etchart. Join my Facebook group, Electrify, Electrify Your Life. All these links are below in the description. Stay tuned for the next video and thanks for watching.